All right, well, I'm just kicking off the uh, maiden print on this uh, freshly built Mark IIS, and I uh, thought people might appreciate a little overview on maybe the changes and, you know, whatever. So here we go. So the number one thing is um, the power supply clicking is uh, now no longer an issue. They have not really made any changes to the power supply itself, but what they did was they adjusted the PWM duty cycle so uh, it doesn't actually, like, bang the power supply you can see it kind of fading in and out there before it just used to kind of slap the power supply and you get clicking going along with the with the flashing but it doesn't flash anymore now it fades in and out so um that's just a matter of adjusting the pwm duty cycle software change there but still pretty cool uh that's going to apply to the mark threes as well um the main major change on the system is the filament sensor like uh, visually you'll notice that there's no there's no nipple sort of thing entry there and basically what they did, I mean, I did a little extruder build, but, you know, here's a here's an extruder here. And, um, you know, the whole... Oops, I guess I need to take this apart. Yeah. Get this with one hand. But basically, uh, the mechanism actuates with a ball in there. And um, when you insert filament, it displaces the ball. Oh, that's a cruddy little probe there. Hang on here, let me get a fresh one. So, when you insert filament, I'm trying to do this one handed here, it displaces the ball. Yeah. And then that causes the flag here to trigger on an IR interrupter filament, uh, an IR interrupter, which is a new style of filament sensor which is uh, kind of infallible to white or, uh, you know, low pigment, you know, transparent type filaments. So that's cool. Um, in comparison to uh, the earlier Mark III's, like, you know, here, uh, this is an older guy. It's got the uh, stiffened up Z-axis. So you can see that they've got the, the, the fasteners buried in there a little bit. That, that's been available on the Mark III's for a little bit. Um, so that's, that's a different change. Um, the extruder compared to the Mark III version is a little bit more compact and that makes it a little bit stiffer. So there's only one fastener to undo the idler side, whereas before there were two. Um, so all in all, what that means is that the whole extruder is kind of easier to service. You only got one fastener to take off when you're trying to disassemble the idler. There's no extra PTFE in the top where things can get hung up. I've got a fair share of you know dead filament sensors from people rooting around in there and then just destroying the lens on there yeah that's that's a bad day so you know this is this is outside of the filament path it's going to be a much more reliable system um, and then also you know you can see here just by kind of removing the motor and the cover you know you can access the entire hot end to switch out the ptfe without having to disassemble the, disassemble the whole extruder so that's that's really cool um, another cool thing that i like a lot is that they are Banishing the textile sleeves, or I'm sorry, banishing the uh, spiral wraps. So the spiral wraps is what they used to use uh, for the extruder harness, the heat bed harness, and also the X motor harness. Um, and uh, yeah, now they're using. They used, they actually went to this 8 mil stuff for a while, and they finally finalized on the 13 mil Hellerman Titan twist in uh, material. Which you know, if you're looking for it, good luck. You know, you gotta. You got to import, you know, uh, a lot. So I've got it. If you need some, just hit me up. But uh, anyway, yeah, we retrofit all our machines, Mark II, Mark III, whatever. They don't leave the shop without the upgrade. And um, another change with that is the retention for the extruder harness is with clamps now on both the uh, heat bed and the uh, extruder. That's a much better system than the old zip tie system. I've got a whole bucket over here somewhere of old, uh, yeah, here we go. Here's a, a batch of covers that we've replaced with the old style. It's kind of cool, you can see the evolution. This is the old style. Here's one of the newer ones with more cutouts, uh, just to make it print a little bit faster. And uh, still retained with zip ties there. But anyway, so yeah, that's a, that's a change. Um, so uh, another cool thing that makes it easier to service is there used to be these fiddly nylon washers holding the idler door. Um, that's no longer necessary. So now it's just, you know, just strapped on there, which I like. 
let's see here what else we got um, so a little visual change all of the undercarriage bits are black now so on an orange build you used to have orange here orange here orange here orange on the motor mount so now all the undercarriage bits are black which is kind of visually cool I actually on the orange ones I was doing uh, orange zip ties just to sort of keep everything in line but don't need to do that anymore um, what else do I got here the print fan so you know you may notice the print fan literally just kicked on and um, it runs quite a bit quieter and they, they adjusted some stuff in the software which is going to be coming in the Mark III firmware update but I think the main change is you'll notice the extruder fan actually I can show you on the part that I have here a little bit easier the print fan is now retained. The print fan is now retained both on the top of this 45 degree angle bit as well as sort of you know parallel to the bed. So that uh, decreases the sort of rattling that you would get from the extruder fan, which I had noticed um, with the uh, R3 design. I thought I had one of those sitting out here too, but I guess not. Oh well. Anyway, um, yeah, the, the, the Mark III's with the 45 degree angle fan don't have support down here and I think the new firmware made a change to the PWM control of the fan to make that a little bit quieter. So that's, that's great because I feel like, you know, it was rattling a little bit. Um, and then uh, I already mentioned the clamp harness, but I feel like that's like a very uh, important uh, change for the long term maintainability and, you know, serviceability of the machine. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm sure what everybody's waiting for, like the bad, you know, they're, you know, it's not all good. Um, there is no printed guide yet, which, you know, I'm sure they're getting to it. You know, I'm sure they're just waiting to make sure that the instructions sell down before they, you know, start sending out printed guides that, uh, you know, ne immediately need to be revised. So, you know, no, 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 no good on there. Um, you know, uh, second downside is these clamps, um, you know, these things are not... Uh, as easy as the zip ties to get situated, but you know once you get them in there definitely definitely for the better um, So I mean unfortunate for me, you know the I can't backport some of this stuff to the mark 2s at least as far as the extruder stuff um, I'm looking at it, but I'm not really confident without using this, you know at least using the same build of materials It looks like maybe we could get a, a bearing in there and make that work, but I'm looking at it um, the build of materials was made a little bit more complicated, but really it's kind of for the better. Um, the, 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 these, what, these, uh, the, the Noctua fan was previously retained with 18 mils, which was, you know, way too much thread. It, it, you know, it was just hard to put in, but at least it wasn't extra fasteners on the build of materials. Now it's 14 mils. And then along with that, the, the front fan is retained with 20 millimeter bolts instead of 18s. So that adds two parts to the build of materials, which was super clean before with a minimal amount of fasteners. So that's unfortunate. And the number one thing that's a bad situation is, and this is, this is, this is going to be super trivial for most people, is just that this part is not designed in SCAD. And uh, I'm upset about that because I'm a huge fan of SCAD. Um, whatever. Nobody cares. Really, nobody but probably me and Yosef himself probably care about that. So, you know, this is a great design. I think all of the improvements are fantastic. Um, there's really no compromise with the improvements. Um, you know, uh, I would say that the previous filament sensor, especially with the architecture students that I work with, they work with white filament almost exclusively, and that was a pretty much a kind of a decent pain point with the, uh, with the Mark III. So, um, you know, I have... You know, I, I, I'm really happy to see this. I'm really looking forward to my upgrade parts. I was very surprised to see that I got some um, some Mark III S's, you know, unexpectedly. And, um, you know, that was that was great. My customers are happy. I'm happy. And I'm looking forward to putting together quite a few of these things for customers who, you know, want really the best 3D printer on the market. So, you know, good work, Prusa Research. Um, keep up the good work. Uh, keep it open source. And... I'm looking forward to everything else that you guys are coming out with. Good times. Thanks for watching.
don't let these just hang. You really just need to use the little holes they give you in the spools. That's going to prevent you from getting tangles. It's going to save your life.